Good morning, guys and girls. I hope you are well, and I hope you had a fantabulous weekend. So, back to the markets, and I have three pairs on watch today. Those are Kiwi CAD, Pound CAD, and Dollar Swiss. There are a few pairs in my watch lists if we just flick to them, which I may be able to flip my bias on. So, one of the things I was doing over the weekend when I did my advanced self review is I was trying to what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put pairs on watch all other confluence factors being equal which give me an opportunity or may give me an opportunity to flip my bias okay one of the things that's going to do it's going to help me to remain neutral okay in the market not be stuck to one way of thinking and also it's going to potentially increase increase my trade frequency so if you're looking at something in one particular way and you're convinced that the bias is in this particular direction direction if there's not really an opportunity if that gets invalidated and there's not really an opportunity for a trade in the other direction then you're sat with that pair on watch for a whole week where when you can't do anything with it if that makes sense okay so i'm trying to put pairs on watch where there is an opportunity to flip my bias if what i'm looking for gets invalidated that way you stay stay neutral and my thinking is that it would increase my trade frequency as well but so these are the things that I do at the weekend. I'm always looking to improve. Okay. And so Kiwi CAD, let's break this down. So as I see it, as it stands, okay, and I, I'll tell you what I mean by as it stands as we get down to the lower time frames. Um, so we have the things that stand out to me, okay, is that we tapped into this low here. There was an exchange of liquidity there. We came down, and the clue that this may be valuable is one. Okay, the last time uh, liquidity was exchanged here, price smashed through the high of this structure. Okay, and we had quite an impulsive move to the upside. The other clue that that was likely an area of value is at the time was that we near missed to it multiple times. Near miss, near miss, FOMO channel. Okay, we have the the fr- three drives one, two. Then we tap into it. What do we do on the higher time frames? We usually break below wash out the orders, discounted prices for the bigger players, and then we move to the upside aggressively. If you just look at the look at the weekly close, when you get a big bullish candle like this with a big wick below it, that suggests a washout of orders from below here and that we may be moving to the upside to take out this high that this high near missed too. So one of the things that gives me a clue that this is an attractive area of value is not just the fact that uh, you, you can see it even on the weekly chart, but the fact that we near missed to it. So I'm seeing this as a potential impulse correction continuation to take out that high that that high near missed to. Okay, we've got the weekly confirmation, the daily, what's price doing at the moment. Okay, so I have this marked up here, and this could have been an area of value to push to the downside because we've near missed to it multiple times. But look what price is doing. It's consolidating above or mostly above this ray line, which I've got plotted on. That gives me a clue that there was not enough liquidity here at this moment in time to send price back down. And and likely, you know, th- that washout of liquidity here would be too much of a washout for price to move back down to the area because we've collected all of the liquidity um, that, that we needed to, co- to collect for this to move to the upside. This is not as significant as this low here, okay? So therefore, it makes more logical sense that we would move higher and not respond from here when we've just washed out all of that liquidity, okay? If we zoom down, you can see what's price done. It's left a footprint, okay, which just so happens to be the retest of the back end of all of this. So what I'm looking for with all that in mind is I'll be looking for the following. I'll be, I'm, I've just drawn it with uh, the way I used to do it. Uh, just because it's just a bit quicker. But what I'm looking for is a three-touch, one-hour continuation or a two-touch, one-hour continuation with a three-touch structural approach. So something that looks like that, okay, or a three three touches leading down to that first touch, down to that footprint. And then I would be able to manage this up to the start of all of this consolidation. So the start of all of this was here, okay, and we, we kind of near missed to that to some extent. The start of this whole corrective move down was there. So that would be my um that would be my first target, and I'd be able to manage it 
something in the region of two and a half percent, something around that. But my in this instance, my uh, so the next target would be about here. Okay, you could set you could potentially set a take profit there. Okay, but in this instance, I'm actually more inclined to uh, to hold this. That's kind of I, I'd look for a little bit more than that in terms of profit potential before I start using the mechanical management tool. So what I would use in this instance, especially as this is well, it was a bit of a sharp move, but by that point we would have retraced. We just measured this. We would have retraced about seventy percent of the move. So I don't really see that holding much weight by that point. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this just smashes straight through. We'd likely get a bit of consolidation here because it was the start of this corrective uh, move down. But I would see this following through. So what I would do is I would I would just hold this and I would actually use the mechanical management tool. I would measure from this range. Okay, so where we broke and to the to the high that we near missed too and one of the reasons i would set my take profit is that there is because the 90 percent area almost lines up bang on so i would actually set my take profit there which would give give me something in the region so at the 90 percent area for something in the region of 13 14 percent okay and then i would trail my stop loss at the same time so that is um that is uh kiwi cad okay so let's just save that quickly. So I have an alert set. Oh, yeah. So what I was saying is that I would consider the short possibly. Let's have a look. Let's what do we look like on the higher time frames? Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't actually looking at it, it doesn't really make sense because I mean we could be seeing if we were going to get a short trade, I would want to see I would want to see a break back below there. So something like that. And then, then consolidation afterwards, like that. Okay, that would be very intentional. And then if we zoomed out, again, it, it doesn't really make too much contextual sen sense when we've had a reversal structure leading into that, and then there's nothing really below until all the way down here. That to me just looks like a impulse correction continuation to push higher, and we've washed out all of the liquidity there. So. Um, at this moment in time, not looking for any cells on that. So that is what I'm going to be looking for from KiwiCAD. Let's save that and move on. PoundCAD. PoundCAD is a similar deal. Now, with PoundCAD, there is a reason for a potential short. Okay. And this is what I was talking about flipping my bias. And we'll, we will touch on that when I get down to the, the, um, uh, let's have a look. Yeah that there's a potential for both on this. Okay. So the reason I'm looking for a short in this instance is if we just zoom out, okay, we've kind of near missed that high, but we have broken above, we have broken above this high. Okay. And we're, we're still above that at this moment in time, but where, what I'm looking at this one, how I'm looking at this one is that we've had the impulse down. There's your daily high. And, and then we have a, a gap here to this low here. So I'm seeing this as a potential impulse correction continuation to the downside to take out this consolidation here, which this low near miss too. And the reason being is because this is the retest of the back end of all of this. Yes, we've pulled up quite far, but this is a corrective pair. This is pound CAD. So as I, as I often say, sometimes we pull back about 60% of the move. We're kind of just on that kind of borderline at the minute. Um, so seeing this as a potential area of value, partly because we have, as well, we have a one, two, three. And when we have a one, two, three like that, if it completes at an area of value, that may be, you know, where we tend to reverse, where we reverse from. We just measure the start of the correction that lines up perfectly. Okay. It also, we also have to be neutral enough to um, remember that, you can see we're doing the same thing as we've done with Kiwi CAD. So potentially this could be, let's try that again. So potentially this could be something like this, which gives us a one, two, three down into that area. And then we get long from there and I would be open to that. Okay. Because if we just zoom back out, we are 
we have broken above here and we are trading back above these highs okay so this could actually be uh, an impulse correction to continuation to push higher to take out take out that high which that high near missed too so this is what i was talking about being neutral and you might be thinking well why haven't you got a forecast on for the long position well the reason i've got not got a forecast on for the long position is because this is a daily forecast right and i'm only looking at things that would likely be ready by the end of the day and that's what i just drew okay so that this is the one hour chart, right? So for that to form, okay, if you just look at the candles, okay, that wouldn't be ready till tomorrow morning, okay? Even, yeah, so that, that wouldn't that uh, wouldn't make sense in terms of a daily forecast. So I may have that forecast on tomorrow, depending on what develops, uh, if anything, during the day. But in terms of daily forecasts, what I'll be looking for is I'm looking for a break below. So where does that buy idea that I just showed you, <clears throat> where does that buy idea become invalidated? Well, it becomes invalidated if we break below the base of this consolidation. What do we have there? Sharp move down followed by sharp move up. That's likely where the liquidity is if we're going to the depth, to the upside, okay? So if we break below that, the area of inflection, okay, or area of interest, we break below that and we flag afterwards, then that is the market saying, okay, there was not enough liquidity at this base at that sharp hook point, which I just showed you on the 15 minute chart for price to do this. Okay. And actually what what's happening is this is just the banks and the bigger players stacking their orders for the next wave to the downside because we've actually broke above here. Okay. That would be very intentional. We'd be well positioned on the daily chart. Um, and on the lower time frames, and then we could be seeing a move down. Okay, so down to this low, we'd have about three, four percent to that first low there, and then down to what I would do in this instance is, so if we just uh, down to there, we would have about eight percent to work with. Okay, and what I would do once again is I would use the mechanical management tool. And I would measure from range to range and I would set my take profit there because it's just above the 90% area and we have some sharp moves here, okay, where there may be liquidity. So we may pull back from there about 50% of the range, even if we do continue to take out that low and I don't want to sit through a pullback of 4 plus percent, okay? So that is... Um, so that's what I meant by flipping, potentially flipping my bias, putting pairs on watch like this, which may give us an opportunity for a long and a short. One of the things that's important in trading is staying neutral, okay? Because you see it in politics all the time. When people have a view and they're not open to any other view, you can provide them with factual data proving that their opinion is wrong and they'll they'll just disregard it because that's, that's in a prime example of confirmation bias, okay? So that's what I'm going to be looking for on pound CAD have an alert set there. Okay. And if we don't push down to that, then nothing that I've um, been anticipating today will have shaped up. Okay. So last up is, um, last up is dollar Swiss. Let's try that again. For some reason, it's not saving today. I don't know what's going on with, right, there we go. Uh, dollar Swiss. So dollar Swiss is a bit more simple. This is not really one that I would flip my bias on, not this week anyway. So on the daily chart, you can see that we've, th this was quite interesting as well, I think from a pattern separation point of view, I maybe had a touch on that briefly. So we have this high here, okay? We break above in the form of a reversal structure, okay? We have the middle section there. We then move to the downside. We have these highs here. Price scoops back round, breaks above, catches people on the wrong side of the market, move to, moves to the downside. Okay, okay, and now we have, you, you can't see this area of value so much on the daily chart. This is partly why this is lower on the list and partly just because of the, the overall sequence. Okay, I'm looking at how price is moving, not just what it's doing. But what we can see... We, we've broken above this area of value, which will be more visible on the four hour chart. But what is interesting from a daily or what is clear from a daily perspective is that we've broken above this high 
caught people on the wrong side of the market and moved to the downside. And we're also trading back below this high, this low here. OK, so we're well and truly below there. Where do you think the sellers will likely be getting out of their positions? At many of them, I would imagine it would be down here. OK, so we may be able to capitalize if these people, the sellers are not, you know, relinquishing their positions, then they'll be holding it down to here, which means that any significant buying pressure will not likely take place until we get down to that area. If we look at the weekly chart, you can see we have a very heavy bodied bearish candle. So big, heavy body and a big wick above it, suggesting a washout of liquidity and that we've retested the back end of all of this. OK, we just drill down from a pattern separation point of view. This starts to become a bit interesting. OK, so you can see that we we kind of near missed to that area to some extent. Yes, we have a, a slight near miss to there. OK, but this this is the key bit. This exchange of liquidity is the one which caused price to smash through the brick wall low, and not just any low, but a sharp low as well. So there must have been a lot of liquidity here for price to move to, uh, for price to do that. OK, so I'm not surprised that we responded from that area and not that one, OK, because that was the sharper move and the one that broke the low. And I'm, and that implies looking at what price has done now. And if we get a correction afterwards, that price doesn't need to come all the way up here to take out any liquidity that was or may still be sat there for it to move to the downside, which is probably probably why it's dropped like a stone. OK, from a pattern separation point of view, you can see here we have the we have this structure, okay, we have the one, two, uh, if we just, let's just have a look at this on the 15 minute. Yep, exactly what I was expecting. We have a near miss here to this high, suggesting that's where the liquidity is. We tap into that high and then we move to the downside aggressively. Okay, if we just look at this, we do have a bit of a, this. I think this was more interesting on the 15 minute chart when I was looking at this. Here we have, what do we have? Price breaks out of all of this, leaves a bit of a footprint. We move to the downside. Okay, we have this structure. We have the middle section. Okay, we we do have to some extent. It's not really visible on the 15. We have a slight near miss to here. We come back up. We Obviously, there was a lot of liquidity here because we didn't just respond from these highs. We came all the way back up here, tapped just above, washed out the liquidity that was there, moved to the downside. OK, what do we have? The same psychology again. If We just look at this. OK, so we have this high here and we near missed to it. OK, so I'm not surprised, even though it looked like we was getting a consolidation here. If there's a near miss to an area, that's likely where there's a lot of liquidity sat. So what happens? We break above, tap into the area that we near missed to. We get this structure, then we move to the downside. OK, so if we just zoom down, we then have. We then have this here, so we have a bit of a structure there. OK, oh, I've already just done that one. I've just realized I'm on the one hour chart doing separating the same pattern again. OK, but what we have now, we've dropped out of all of this now. And what has price done? It's left a footprint here. OK, so if we just analyze this. We've left a bit of a footprint. there. OK, so I wouldn't be surprised. What have we done? We've kind of near missed to it. So what I'm going to be looking for with that in mind. OK, and that candle there is giving me a clue that, that this will uh, you know, likely. So we've pulled up there. We've had that one hour close there. This is giving me a clue that what we will likely get is something like that. A book uh, is a three touch one hour continuation or a two touch one hour continuation with a three touch structural approach. And if we do get that, I'll be looking for the risk entry within the correction. When we've had this many corrections on the way down, I don't take reduced risk entries on the break because it's more risky and more likely that price will uh, more likely that price will tag you in, tag you out and force something slightly larger. OK, so having looking for the risk entry within the structure uh, mitigates the risk of that happening. And then I'll be able to manage this down to that first inflection point there. OK, and then I would I would use the mechanical management tool, measure from range to range, set a take profit there, and I would trail my stop loss accordingly. So that is dollar Swiss. I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks, and I will uh, bring you some more during this week. And of course, bring you a trade recap if any of these entries, which I've forecasted, 
um, shape up and provide me with an entry. Have a great rest of your day and thank you very much indeed for watching.